So this is the chapter review, and this is an excellent uh, concept map that has a summary of all the terms and concepts in chapter 10 for statistics. So please take a moment and look at the things that we studied in this chapter. Um, I think it's a great little review here, key concepts, read this over on your own about scatter plots, line of best fit, equations, and two-way tables. So take a moment, pause the video, read these notes over, and then start the rest of the video. Describe the association. Now, what we see, by the way, on this video is not everything that will be tested on the test. This is only part of the chapter test review. We did some of it in class as well. Anything that we've practiced in our packet, our big chapter 10 packet, that will, all of those things will be on the test. This is just some of the material, not all of it. This is just a partial review, let's say. Describe the association shown in the bivariate data for each scatter plot. I'm going to answer number three. Number three looks to me like strong negative. and linear association. I'm going to let you answer number four on your own. Number five, state the line that represents the line of best fit for each scatter plot. To me, it looks like B is more centered there, so I'm going to say line B for number five. I'm going to let you answer number six on your own. Number seven, identify the outliers in each of the scatter plot. Number seven, I believe the point four, two is the outlier on the scatter plot here in number seven. I'm going to let you answer number eight on your own. We will go over these answers in class. So you answer number eight. Number 10, draw a scatter plot and a line of best fit for each table of bivariate data. Find an equation. Well, we only have one table here. This is one complete table. There are, um, obviously, I'm not doing number 9 and number 11, but I did choose number 10 here. So draw a scatter pot, plot and a line of best fit for this table of bivariate data. Find an equation for the line of best fit. Use one centimeter on the horizontal axis to represent a thousand products. Use one centimeter on the vertical axis to represent fifty dollars. First thing I'm going to do is title my graph and I'm going to call it Commission Earned for Sales. Very little space here. You have a little bit more space on your paper. Commission Earned for Sales. I'm also going to label my axes. The x-axis does have an x label on it on the table, and the y-axis uses a y on the table. The x-axis is products sold, and I'm getting that right off the table. And the y-axis is commission earned. And that's in dollars. So I'm going to label my x axes, um, like it said, one centimeter for each one, meaning products for five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can be doing so on your graph paper at the same time. And each centimeter on the y is labeling 50, so 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, how high do I need to go? Oh, pretty high up there. Okay, so we got to keep going. 450, 500, 550, 
600, 650. I think my highest number is 610. So I'm good. Okay. So plotting these points, a um, thousand one twenty. So one thousand products. Oh, I should say products sold because I didn't write out thousand. I'm going to write thousand here in the thousands because it's too hard to write one zero zero zero. Not enough space there. So 1,000 gives me a point of 120, which looks like it would be there. Well, hopefully these are going to be going on well. 2,000 is 190. Oh, they're a little high. 2,000 and 180. 4,000 and 330. Uh, 5,040. 5,040? Wow, that's, I bet that's an outlier. It's still too high. Come on, line up. 8,610. That's that high point that we have. 8,000. 8,600. Six, ten. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Line up nice. Nope. 8,610. It's a little bit off. Four, you be accurate. 4,340. 7,550. Six thousand four seventy. Keep going. Six thousand four seventy. Three thousand two seventy. One thousand one hundred. Five thousand four hundred. Six thousand four eighty. And 3,260. So I put all of my points on there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of them. Yes, there is 14 weeks. So I didn't forget any. I have all my labels. And uh, draw scatter plot and a line of best fit. Find an equation for that line of best fit. Well, I'm going to let you draw that line of best fit because it doesn't come out very well on the smart board here. Um, oh, maybe I can do it. Let's see. You are also making your line of best fit. I think it's going to go through this upper point here. And maybe this lower one. Go through that point. Approximately there, maybe. It's a little high there. I did want to hit this point down here, that 1,120 point. That's a little bit higher than that, but you can draw it more accurately, accurately with your ruler. So. Write an equation. Find an equation for the line of best fit. Choose two points. I'm going to choose the points 2,000 and 190 and 5,400 that are on my line of best fit, whether they look like they are or not. On my paper, they are. So delta y over delta x, don't forget that. We're finding our slope. So 400 minus 190 is 210, and 5,000 minus 2,000 is 3,000. Well, isn't that nice? 210, 421, and 300 have a relationship of 7, so it's 700 is my slope. 
um, using y equals mx plus b. And one of the points, uh, I'll choose 400 for my y. I'm going to use this point equals 7 hundredths, my slope, times my x of 5,000 plus what b? Well, 7 hundredths times 5,000, that's 350. So 400 minus that 350 will give me my b of 50. So my equation for this line of best fit would be y equals 7 hundredths x plus 50. And I could even go to my graph and go ahead and write that on here. Y equals 7 hundredths x plus 50. And it might go down there and hit the y intercept at x. Mine's off just a tiny bit, but if I continued drawing it, it would hit that on my paper that I have in my hand. It does hit at uh, the y intercept of 50. So that's number 10. Number 12, identify whether the given data are categorical or quantitative. I'm going to let you answer 10 or 12, 13, and 14 on your own. Let's go to the two-way table. Answer questions 15 to 18. Co copy and complete this two-way table. Well, it's right there for you. Um, number 15, describe the, oh, complete it. Well, let's complete it. So 156 plus 40 makes 196 here. And 196 and 204 gives me 400. And four, 204 minus that 132 would give me this. Um, yes, like swimming, but no, don't like jogging, 72. Um, and the total of no's would be 172. So do I have everything filled in? 72, 172, 196, and 400. Yes. Describe the association between the two categorical data sets, categorical data sets. Those who like jogging also like swimming. My association is those who like jogging also like swimming those who dislike those who dislike swimming or jogging also dislike Swimming. That's the inverse. Find the relative frequencies within each row and interpret their meanings within the row. So the rows going across 156 out of 96. So we're going to find the relative frequencies here. So I have to have another table. Yes. No. Total. So I'm going across the row first. So rows are this way. Um, and then, so this is the swimming. I'll say swim. And jog. So here's where my ones, my relative frequencies, need to total to 1. So 156 out of 196, I guess you don't have to show that here, um, but maybe off to the side. 156 out of 196, 80% of the people said yes to jogging and swimming, and um, no was 40 out of 196. So that's 20%. And no to jogging, but yes to swimming was 72 out of 204. 
which was 35%, 35 hundredths, and 132 out of no to swimming and no to jogging, 132 out of 204 was 65% or 65 hundredths. So that's number 17 across the rows. Find the relative frequencies within each of the columns. So that's going down. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth when you can. So I'm going to let you figure out the relative frequ frequency. So make another table here, similar to the one I did in number 17. And um, you fill in number 18. So I'm going to let you do number 18 on your own and complete that. And let's go to the last question. Construct a two-way table using the data below. M represents marathon. NM represents not participating in the marathon. F represents being a member of a fitness club. NF represents not being a member of a fitness club. Okay. So I'm going to put fitness club across the top and marathon on the side. That's my rows. And yes, they belong, and no. I'm going to use yes and no. And total. Yes, no, like non-member. Um, and not in a marathon, meaning no. So, people who are in a fitness club who are marathoners. So that's what this yes column is. So one, two, three, four, five. So people who are not marathoners, but in a fitness club. Not marathon, fitness. Not marathon, fitness. One, not marathon fitness. Two, three. So that's three for a total of eight. So not in a fitness club, but yes, a marathoner. So not fitness, but yes, a marathoner. I don't see any of those. So that's zero, and not in a fitness club and not a marathoner. Not fitness, not marathoner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight. And yes, there were 16, so that's five. This is 3 plus 8 is 11, and there were 16 people total in the survey. So that's filling in a two-way table uh, using that data. And we could go on and find relative frequencies with that one, which we did in class um, with the couple questions that came after this. So that's it for this part of the review today. Make sure you go back and finish the questions that you were left to finish on your own.